Welcome back to Roy and Rescue. I had another great email come in asking a really, really good question about what do I do if someone has an asthma attack and emergency medical services are some distance away and I don't have any asthma medication available. No rescue inhalers like albuterol uh, and nothing to give to the patient to try to break it. Was there anything I can do? Um, I'm going to try to address this as simply and as basically as possible, but also give you some background information of what's going on. All right, first of all, let's understand a little bit about asthma. Asthma is a constricting of the airways all the way through till to the bronchioles, which are the little um, branch-like little fingerings that lead down to the alveoli sacs, and they're surrounded with muscles that constrict as well. And as those constrict and tighten and the inflammation inside the bronchial swells, the passage of airway, if you consider it like a straw, gets more and more narrow with the more inflammation that, that comes into it. Then you get this constricting of the muscles around the bronchioles and it only complicates it. And then on top of that, we add mucus production, which clogs those narrowed airways and we just have a mess on our hands. And that's why asthma can come on so quickly even in people that have never had it before from like an allergic reaction or maybe a first time asthma attack and it's very scary. I mean, it's like drowning in the air and it's just very, very anxiety driving and, and some of the things that we're going to need to do as rescuers are vital if we're going to help this person through this event. Now, there's another level of asthma as well and that's just persistent chronic asthma where people have the constant wheezing, they're on medication for treatment, it, they're always kind of in a state of inflammation, and then they have an exacerbation or, or an increased amount of swelling, constricting, and then they have an asthma attack. Some things about that are kind of scary because they might already be on medications long term, and if they have been, their bodies may not react to emergency medications quite as easily as somebody who's never had an asthma medication before but we're still gonna have the same treatments, we're still gonna do the same thing. But let's back up and go to the situation like this person that emailed me asked about, and that is, what do I do if I don't have anything? I did some research on this to see if there were any over-the-counter medications um, that have been updated from the last time I checked, and also any really actually pretty credible home remedies, and I have not found anything. <laughs> So we're right back to where I was 10, 15 years ago in this industry where we're still gonna follow the same, um, the same steps if we don't have any asthma medication and we have somebody suffering from asthma. Uh, the first thing that you can do that actually is going to help more than you realize is to stay calm. Stay calm, keep the patient calm. Help relieve their anxiety by breathing with them slowly as possible although taking nice full breaths to get as much oxygen and carbon dioxide out, oxygen in, carbon dioxide out, so that they get good gas exchange. They're, again, remember, they're suffocating and they know it and they are very scared. Getting them more excited or causing them to panic even more is only gonna cause more inflammation, more constricting, and it may not benefit the person at all. And the reason being, not just because they're scared, in fact, you know, the fight or flight mechanism actually usually makes things bigger. So if we could actually get them to pump a little adrenaline, that'd be awesome. They already are. So probably their adrenaline is already to the max and they're still not bronchodilating enough or the muscles aren't relaxing enough. What's gonna happen is they're gonna start to breathe more quickly. It's gonna cause them to cough. And as they cough, that irritates the airways and causes more inflammation, swelling, and mucus production. So that's why we want to try to keep them calm. It isn't a matter of trying to make them breathe slow when they can't breathe already. It's a matter of trying not to aggravate already irritated airways. All right, phase two. You would think to bring them out into the cold would be a good idea because like with croup, which is an inflammation of the, the lower airways, but the upper part of the lower airways, like around the larynx, and the upper part of the trachea, this is usually good. The cooler air, the moist, humidified air helps to lubricate that, that airway. The cold helps to shrink swollen membranes, and we can usually get some relief from that. Not quite the same idea necessarily when it comes to asthma. Asthma can actually be aggravated by putting someone out into the cold air. Um, if it's mildly cooler air, if it's night air with some high humidities, you know, see, see if they, how they respond to it. Um, if they feel like they can breathe better by going out into the fresh air, as long as it's not allergy induced and now we're putting them into the allergy that's actually causing the asthma, um, maybe that's the best place while you're waiting for emergency medical services to arrive. 
Um, but you're going to have to kind of watch them because if that cold, if it's real cold air, it can cause uh, some kind of a rebound inflammation and actually complicate the, the issue. Um, the, the other thing that I'm going to encourage as far as over-the-counter and home remedy, and this goes for just about everybody, now always consult your normal physician. Um, ask them if it's a good idea. If they tell you no, then don't do it. But for me, when I pack a first aid kit, I like to bring like a primatine mist or another generic epinephrine inhaler. Now there can be some complications and you'll want to watch for this. They can have preservatives in them like alcohol and some other irritating chemicals. And in a person who's having an asthma attack, those substances could actually cause irritation and actually you know, make the condition worse as well. Um, but I think in the newer forms of these medications, they're trying to get rid of those aggravants. And um, it's an epinephrine that is inhaled. It's got a shorter um, acting time frame, so it really is just an emergency time buyer while you're waiting for emergency medical services to come in and start a nebulized albuterol treatment, uh, possibly get them uh, intubated if it's that bad and actually breathe for them, um, get them oxygen so that we can make the most use of the little bit of oxygen exchange or the air exchange that's taking place and then rush them to the hospital so that we can get them steroids and get things opened up and try to get them out of this crisis. Um, but again, if you're going to go over the counter for any kind of epinephrine or ephedrine types of asthma um, medicines, please consult your physician or healthcare provider prior to. Sorry, excuse me for that interruption. Now, on the same line, it isn't a bad idea, in my opinion, to have those available as only an emergency backup. There's a couple things I like to have in my first aid kit in the car. Primatine mist or another brand or non-brand of epinephrine inhaler to, bro to, to relax those muscles that are constricting down around the airways. It's got a different action than albuterol, but it does tend to help. Um, the other is liquid Benadryl. I like the liquid Benadryl because if it's an allergic reaction with an asthmatic reaction on top of the allergy, we can get at least the dosing of Benadryl on board and give them something to help open those airways in hoping to buy time until emergency medical advanced life support arrives and we can start to cure this problem long term and get them out of the woods. Um, again, consult your physician, but that's, in my opinion, that's what I put in my first aid bag, and it's been a, a pretty good standby. Um, and even if you have just ir irritational allergies, it's always nice to have Benadryl, especially when you're out camping or out hiking or biking or something like that. So um, that's about the furthest it's going to go as far as home remedies. Um, the goal, if you have someone that has an asthma attack, is activate 911 emergency medical services, keep the person calm. Always assess the airway, breathing, and circulation of the patient. And if they stop breathing, start breathing for them. If they lose their pulse or go unconscious with no movement, no breathing, you may need to begin CPR. Feel free to check out all of our training at profirstaid.com so that you can read up more about asthma attacks and how to treat it and how to do airway, breathing, circulation methods. I hope this was helpful. And until next time, this is Roy with Roy on Rescue. Go forth and rescue. Have a great day. So nobody disrespect your love Give me strength and power Float through white dreads Nothing